Today, the Korean People's Army is marching forward with vigor for achieving the reunification of the country and safeguarding the sovereignty of the fatherland and the independence and peace of the world. This step forward, vigorous and steady first, along the self-chosen path, is related to its victorious, proud history. Seventy years ago, on April the 25th, 1932, the great leader Kim Il-sung founded the Korean People's Revolutionary Army. The Korean People's Revolutionary Army and its leadership raised a great anti-Japanese war in the vast regions in and around Mount Pakdu. Great leader Kim Il-sung gave a telling blow to the million-strong Kwantung army of the Japanese imperialists with a protean guerrilla tactics and finally liberated a fatherland. In this course, many other combatants and commanders were brought up from among the sons and daughters of ordinary people in Korea. With these people as a core, the great leader Kim Il-sung further developed the Korean People's Revolutionary Army into the Korean People's Army, the regular revolutionary armed forces on February the 8th, 1948. Around the time, the U.S. imperialists who occupied the southern part of Korea committed incessant armed provocations against the Democratic People's Republic of Korea and dispatched Dallas, the then Secretary of State, to South Korea to check up the final preparations for a war. At the dawn of June 25, 1950, the United States provoked the world to materialize its centuries-old ambition for the invasion of Korea and to achieve its strategic purpose in the Asia-Pacific region. The Korean War provoked by the U.S. imperialists' aggressive forces imposed unbearable misfortunes upon the Korean people. The great leader Kim Il-sung delivered his trick radio address under the title Go All Out for Victory in the War in order to expel the dark clouds of war and defend the peace.
the Korean people faithful to the cause of their leader rose up as one upholding the radio dress of Kim Il-sung. People's Army soldiers who turned out for the righteous cause to safeguard their hometowns and fatherland switched over the counteroffensive like an angry lion to wipe out the aggressors and liberate the cities and villages occupied by the U.S. imperialists. The Marines of the Korean People's Army sank the U.S. heavy cruiser Baltimore only with three torpedo birds to write a new record in the annals of world naval war. The brave pilots of the Korean People's Army performed miracles by using propeller-type aircraft with which they shot down B-29, regarded as an emperor in the air. The Walmi Island was a tiny piece of land which a coast artillery company was defending with four guns. At the very place, the indomitable soldiers of the heroic Korean People's Army kept off the landing forces of MacArthur who swooped down with over 1,000 airplanes, 300 warships and 50,000 troops for three days. The U.S. forces, accustomed so far with a laurel of victory everywhere in the world, could not escape from the fate of the defeated in the Korean War. The new type equipment sent by the warmongers of the Wall Street turned into scraps of iron before they could perform their power. The U.S. imperialists admitted their disgraceful defeat in Korea for the first time in their history, which marked the first step down to their decline. The great victory of the Korean people and army was wholly attributable to the wise leadership of the prominent military strategist, Generalissimo Kim Il-sung. The Korean people's army marched on proudly in the parade of victors. Instead of learning a lesson from the defeat in the war, the U.S. imperialists challenged the Korean people with provocations and espionage acts. The heroic Korean people's army gave disgrace and death to the enemies whenever they provoked.
In January 1968, the U.S. armed spy ship Pueblo entered deep into our territorial waters illegally. The Korean People's Army, the defender of the nation and justice, immediately captured a Pueblo. The then U.S. President Johnson insisted that it was sailing on open seas, denying the intrusion and brought the issue to the United Nations. But the crewmen of the ship acknowledged their espionage acts and presented petition to President Johnson to make an apology to the government of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. The United States threatened the Democratic People's Republic of Korea with retaliation by mobilizing a large number of forces, including the fleet of aircraft carrier. A touch-and-go situation was created on the Korean Peninsula, and the justice and peace-loving people of the world followed the developments in Korea in serious concern. No change was made in the confidence and courage of the Korean People's Army, which had strengthened itself in confrontation with the United States. The United States had no other choice but present a letter of apology to the Korean people who answered without hesitation, retaliation for retaliation and all-out war for all-out war. In April 1969, the largest reconnaissance plane, EC-121 of the United States, intruded into the territorial air of Korea. The People's Army sent this unwelcome air gas to the hill as a self-defensive measure. In spite of the continued defeats, the U.S. aggressors were not prudent. The men of the Korean People's Army, who regarded dignity of the fatherland as more precious than their own life, were merciless to the intruders, and the enemy deservedly sustained only humiliation and death. Indeed, the 70 years covered by the Korean People's Army are a proud path of victory in the fight against the U.S. and Japanese aggressors. Today, too, the Korean People's Army, confident of the future, are marching forward with a pride of victors. victories could be achieved under the wise leadership of the great leader of the Korean people, Kim Il-sung, and the supreme commander of the Korean people's army, Kim Jong-il.
Therefore, all the men of the Korean People's Army, from young soldiers to gray-haired general officers, boundlessly revere and respect the Supreme Commander. Today, the Korean People's Army units at all levels are equipped with new art of war and the Supreme Commander's guidance and are filled with confidence in victory. Supreme Commander Kim Jong-il and soldiers share the bonds of kinship like a father and sons in a family. The respect and reverence of officers and soldiers for their Supreme Commander and his love for them are far superior to an atomic bomb. For this reason, all the officers and men of the Korean People's Army firmly believe that they will ever victorious as long as Supreme Commander Kim Jong-il is with them, and the spirit of sacrificing their youth and lives to his order pervades the whole army. Today, under the slogan, let us take in our hand both defending the nation and building socialism, the Korean People's Army are taking the brunt of socialist construction and creating people's happiness. The threat of soldiers is permeated in the significant monumental structures throughout the country. The soldiers find their pride in working for people's happiness. They turn even a noted mountain into a pleasure ground and present it to the people. Building socialism with the army as the pillar and the main driving force of the revolution is the army sent to the politics, the political philosophy put forward by Supreme Commander Kim Jong-il. The Korean people traditionally love the army like their own brothers and sisters. This tradition was created in the early period of army building and further consolidated during the arduous struggle against the Japanese imperialists and the severe battlefields against the U.S. imperialists. Therefore, we call it army people unity and because of this unity, the combat power of the Korean People's Army has a great depth.
The youth regard a service in the army as the boundless honor, and their mothers take it as their pride and dignity. The Korean People's Army has many heroes and heroines. They have made great contributions to the defense of the fatherland and socialist construction. Their spirit is set as a model not only to their colleagues but also to the new generations of their alma mater. The sons and daughters of the heroes and heroines are growing into the core of the army. Many of them will be heroes and heroines as their parents did with bravery and boldness to make the Korean People's Army even more powerful and glorify the honor of the heroic Korean People's Army. The Korean People's Army has the first class theaters and noted art troops in the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Here, art pieces contributing to soldiers' cultural life are being created and performed. Under the guidance of Supreme Commander of the Korean People's Army, Kim Jong-il, genius of art, the artists in the army attained high standard of skills and many of their pieces are well known abroad. The artists in the army call on the soldiers at their units with songs and dances to heighten their morale and are fond of being with them. It is because they loved the company art group at this post from which they made their first step as an artist. The most popular art performance among servicemen and people are the traditional competition of company art groups held every year. Though simple in form and skill, they receive hearty appraisal for the optimistic life of the army is reflected on them. Sunday sports as well as the art activity serve as the twin delights of their life. Where there are soldiers, the games and sports are being played. In these games, the national and world champions are produced. Today, the Korean People's Army has many champions of the world sports competitions, including the season and Olympics. The Democratic People's Republic of Korea has been divided for over half a century and faces constant threat because of the U.S. occupation of South Korea. 
The concrete wall which divides the territory into two leaves a painful wound on the hearts of the Korean people who aspire after reunification. The Korean People's Army, a righteous revolutionary army, has a strong national dignity and knows exactly for what and with whom it must fight. The soldiers put more emphasis on the loyalty to the leader and fatherland than weapons efficiency. The Korean People's Army likes the slogan, A Match for Hundred, put forward by the great leader, Kim Il-sung. Each of soldiers trains himself to be a matchless combatant, like a legendary general who defeated a hundred. determination to carry out at any cost the orders of the supreme commander. This is the character of the Korean People's Army. The Korean People's Army is full of confidence that it can defeat any formidable enemy as long as it is guided by Supreme Commander Kim Jong-il. The Korean People's Army, with a purpose of self-defense, has the necessary amount of up-to-date armaments of all sorts, which the country's powerful defense industry has produced. Under the personal leadership of its Supreme Commander, 
The Korean People's Army has been developed into invincible forces with offensive and defensive means. The Korean People's Army do not want a war, but do not avoid it. And if a war is ignited by any force, it will never miss the opportunity again. People's Army has no limit in its strike, and there is no place on this planet to escape its strike. The Korean People's Army, together with armies of many justice-loving countries, will firmly defend the socialist fatherland for the independence and peace of the world.